Hello, my name is Jim McVeigh, and I'm a prototyping solutions architect at AWS. This video is part of a series of videos about the OPA on AWS Open Source Solution to provide AWS related functionality in your Backstage developer platform. In this video, we're going to focus on security related aspects of the solution. As described in previous videos, OPA on AWS is an open source solution to help customers build their internal developer platform and integrate with AWS. The OPA solution provides the infrastructure as code to run Backstage in AWS, Backstage plugins, a GitLab source code management reference implementation, and an example repository containing a variety of sample templates to create environments and applications in AWS. Let's dive into more details about where and how security and access control is enforced in the solution. We'll begin with a look at the account where Backstage and OPA on AWS have been deployed. We'll refer to this as the Backstage Platform account. In this account, the Backstage application and its plugins run as a service in an Elastic Container Service cluster. A GitLab source code management instance runs as an EC2 instance, and another EC2 instance provides an environment for GitLab runners to execute GitLab CI-CD pipelines. A couple of key roles in the Platform account are the task execution role associated with Backstage, and the EC2 instance role where GitLab runners execute. Before diving into more specifics about these roles and how they're used, let's expand the architecture a bit. A primary use case of OPA on AWS for platform engineers is to provision new environments where business applications can run. For our architecture discussion, we'll bring in another account where a platform engineer would like to provision infrastructure. In each target account, we'll need a role with permissions to create required AWS resources for an environment provider. So for example, if we wanted to provision an Elastic Container Service environment to run containerized applications, then this role will need to be allowed to create VPCs, security groups, ECS clusters, ECR repositories, and other resources required to run containerized apps in an ECS cluster. We'll call this role an environment provisioning role. Environment provider resources, such as the ones we just mentioned, are provisioned through Terraform, CDK, or other infrastructure as code technologies. This infrastructure code is executed as part of a GitLab pipeline. Therefore, the GitLab runner instance role will assume the environment provisioning role so that the required AWS resources are created using the permission policies of the environment provisioning role. It's important to note that the OPA on AWS solution does not create the environment provisioning role in target accounts. This must be created outside of the OPA on AWS installation, and the role should include a trust policy, which allows the STS assume role action from the GitLab runner role. With the runtime environment in place for business applications, the next workflow that we'll cover is deployment of applications to the environment. This is a use case that is usually performed by an application developer. When the environment provider is provisioned, there is an IAM role created in the account which is responsible for provisioning application resources such as ECS services, S3 buckets, KMS keys, application load balancers, and other AWS resources required to run an application in the environment. The role that has permission to create these AWS resources is referred to as the application provisioning role. Application resources are created through infrastructure as code similar to what we just covered with environment providers. That infrastructure as code is executed as part of the application's CI-CD pipeline. So here, we also have the GitLab runner role assuming the application provisioning role when the pipeline runs so that the AWS resources for the application are created. Once the application resources are provisioned, the developer will want to manage their application. They'll want to perform operations such as configuring environment variables, starting and stopping the application, or reviewing application logs. These types of actions are initiated directly from the Backstage UI through widgets contributed by the OPA on AWS plugins. When these operations are triggered, the Backstage platform role will assume a special role, which was created when the environment provider was provisioned. This role is referred to as the application operations role. This role's policy is configured to specifically allow only the operations that would be appropriate for the type of applications supported in the environment provider. For example, in an ECS environment provider, a developer may start and stop the application or scale the service. 
With an understanding of how Backstage and IAM roles are used to run Backstage, manage environment provisioning, application provisioning, and application operations, let's turn to look at how users interact with the Backstage and OPA on AWS solution. Out of the box, the OPA on AWS solution includes plugins and configuration for Okta as an identity provider. It is also possible to configure Backstage for several other identity providers for user identity management and authentication, such as GitHub, Google, Auth0, OneLogin, and more. Reference the URL at the bottom of this page for details on Backstage authentication and additional authentication providers. When the Backstage application starts up, it connects to Okta and fetches directory information to create user and group Backstage entities in an Aurora Postgres database. Backstage uses these entities in its catalog to maintain relationships with other entities, such as ownership relationships. The user and group entities and relationships can also be used by the permission framework that we'll look at shortly. As previously mentioned, the Backstage application is deployed into the platform account as an ECS service. It's also fronted by an application load balancer. This ALB is configured with security groups to only allow access from specific CIDR blocks. In production scenarios, you may also have other network protections in place to control access to the application. End users access the ALB endpoint URL in their browser. Requests are then forwarded to the Backstage ECS service. If the user has not previously authenticated, then they are presented with a login dialog. Login and authentication is delegated to Okta to ensure that the user presents valid credentials. And if authenticated, then the user is redirected to the Backstage application. Subsequent requests during that user session will include information about the authenticated user, which can be leveraged by plugins, such as those involved in the permission framework, to restrict what APIs and UI components the user is allowed to access. Let's look at permissions in Backstage and OPA on AWS. The Backstage permissions framework provides authorization for APIs and user interface actions. This provides Backstage contributors and plugin authors a way to provide permissions to users of their plugins. Backstage integrators, those that are deploying Backstage, can then author policies to define what users and groups are authorized to do. Out of the box, the OPA on AWS solution ships with a policy in place which allows all actions by default. If you want to override this behavior and control authorized access, then you write a policy which returns policy decisions based on defined permissions and the permission requests coming in from users. For example, say a user Sam is in the Human Resources Developer Group and Sam might perform an action which requests the ability to view applications owned by the Payments Developer Group. A policy could return a decision that denies Sam the ability to read those applications since Sam isn't a member of the Payments Developer Group. With policy decisions, you can customize the Backstage application to further enforce authorized access by disabling actions in the UI, such as the ability to delete entities. You can also completely hide entire widgets, such as a tab on a page or the entire page itself. This prevents users from accessing information that they shouldn't view at all. Enforcement of a policy decision may also be done at an API level, and the front end may receive a 401 not authorized response to an API request. In this case, you may choose to display an error message to the user. As you can see, there are multiple ways to handle permission decisions to change the entire user experience. There is detailed documentation about the Backstage Permission Framework at the URL shown on the page here. To assist with getting started with permissions, OPA on AWS provides an example OPA sample permission policy file. The entire contents of the file are not included here on this slide, but a few examples of policies returning decisions are included. In the first example, we're utilizing a permission provided in the OPA plugins named Read OPA App Audit Permission. This permission can be used in a policy to allow or deny a request to read an application's audit entries. This example is denying users that are in the testers group from viewing audit entries for an application. Additional permissions in the OPA plugin are planned for future releases. In the second example, we want to prevent certain users from accessing specific templates. In this snippet, we're examining the type of entity that's part of the incoming permission request. If it is a template entity kind and the type of template is an AWS environment or AWS environment provider, then the returned conditional decision will deny if the user cannot claim ownership of the template entity. This is a slightly more complex example, but it does give Backstage integrators greater granular control over authorized access within the application. 
See the sample source code provided in the OPA on AWS open source repository for more policy decision examples to help write your own policies. Once you've written a policy, you'll need to update the Backstage backend permission plugin to specify your policy. Once you change the Backstage application configuration or code, you will also need to rebuild and deploy a new Backstage image to AWS. Refer to the permission framework documentation for complete details on leveraging the permission framework. That concludes the high-level overview of security facets of the OPA on AWS solution, including IAM roles, user authentication through IDPs, and authorization capabilities through the Backstage permission framework. Be sure to watch other videos in the series to learn more about OPA and how it can help you scale your development.